Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. Now, there's a few common setup issues that I see time and time again, and I think it stems from the ax motion. It feels really powerful when we have a golf club. Let's imagine this is a golf club for a second. If I feel like I'm gonna hit this golf ball and I bring this thing over my head and I chop down into the golf ball, it feels like I have tons and tons of power tons and tons of speed. I feel like I could have chopped that golf ball in two. And I think every golfer from when they begin, when they very begin to start playing, they want to feel that really powerful motion. Well, in golf, unfortunately, that doesn't really work. Instead of having that over the head chop type motion, and I'll fix that, don't worry about the tee, you need to be coming from the inside, get the club in the slot, and then feel like you can deliver that club with a good path to have tons of power and tons of speed. If we continue to set up in ways that get us into that chopping type position, we're gonna lose speed, we're gonna lose distance. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three of the most common setup myths, setup problems, that get you into that chopping position rather than being into a powerful position where we can get into the slot. Once you get set up the right way, you're gonna hit the ball a lot farther. All right, so let's jump right in here. Let's talk about the first issue that can really wreak havoc on your speed. And if I'm kind of imagining that powerful feeling of me coming down and chopping into this golf ball, we all know we don't want to do that, but it feels so good doing that. If I visualize that, one thing that I'll do with my setup is I'll set up in a position where I would have a lot of power coming down in this angle. And if you notice my shoulders, so if I was to put a golf club across my shoulders here, this would be level with the ground. This would be a little tilt away from the target, my head getting farther behind the ball, my spine being kind of angled away from the golf ball. That's really good. But if I'm set up in a way that I feel like I'm gonna come down into this golf ball really powerfully, a lot of times what will happen is my shoulders will get level. I'll get too far kind of to the left if you're looking at my shoulders. And now I'm in this position that feels like I can slam down in this golf ball with a lot of speed, with a lot of, a lot of energy, but it really just doesn't work in golf. So that's the first key. What I want you to do, go ahead right now, even if you're not on the driving range, grab a club, grab a broom, whatever you have to do, follow right along with me on this. And this is really gonna help a ton. Put a club across your shoulders. So hold it right on the tips of your shoulders here. Go ahead and bend forward into your posture. And then I'm gonna feel like my belt buckle goes a little forward toward the target. My upper body gets a little bit more behind it here. My head's behind the golf ball. My chest is behind the golf ball. And you're gonna notice how I create a little bit of an angle with my club there. So just a slight angle is plenty. I don't have to go like this and go really a ton. But what I want you to do is set up very level. And then I want you to tilt away Let's call that about 10 degrees or so with my shoulder angle. Doesn't have to be more than that. A little more, a little less, not a big deal. So go ahead and do that about 15 to 20 times just to get comfortable getting behind that golf ball, just like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my golf club, repeating that same action. So here I'm setting up, I'm getting a little tilt away, and now all of a sudden I've tilted everything much more to the inside. I've created this big area right here where I can swing my hands and arms from the inside. I can get that club into the slot and that's gonna make it a lot easier to create the real speed that we need and not that over the top type speed. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna hinge forward, a little tilt to my shoulders. My head is behind the golf ball. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, nice draw right down the left side of the fairway. All right, now the second piece of this is gonna be a little trick with your elbow. If you get your elbow in the right position, it makes it so much easier to come down from the slot, come down from the inside like we're talking about, to get rid of that ax chop type move that kills our distance, kills our power. So what we're gonna do here, and the way I want you to do this, go ahead and set up to the golf ball. If you're in your living room, just set up to an imaginary golf ball, either way is fine. And I'm gonna get in my shoulder tilt first. Now I'm gonna get about 10 or 15 degrees or so of shoulder tilt like I talked about. And then from there, that's when I'm gonna add my hand. So if I add my right hand from this position, it's gonna be much more under or from the inside when I'm adding the right hand. That helps me to get my shoulders a little more square to the target. It helps promote that tilt. It helps promote me coming more from the inside when I'm doing that. So if you look at my palm of my right hand, it's gonna feel much more underneath the club versus if I'm too level with my shoulders and I add the right hand on there, now all of a sudden my palm is on top of the club. That's what's called a weak grip. And it's very easy for that to turn into a slice or kind of chop down over the top move. So get in the tilt, 15 or 20 reps, add the right hand in there, and then we're gonna close our grip. So a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to have the hand way under here like this. Like I'll see some people really trying to exaggerate it. Just get a little bit to the right. If you're looking for a few key checkpoints there, I'm looking for 
the index finger and my thumb, if I cinch those together, that's gonna be pointed roughly toward my right shoulder. So that's when you know you're getting about the right amount of it. It should look something like that. The second piece of this right hand trick is what I talked about with the elbow. A big mistake when you get your shoulders too level. I'm gonna put this hand on top, palm down, and now my elbow pit is pointed toward the target. That sets me up way too level with my shoulders, way too far to the left, and I really have nothing I can do from this position rather than to chop down over the top and really make a weak swing here. So as I'm adding my right hand, I wanna feel like my elbow, if I look at a, the, the pointy part of my elbow, the bottom of my elbow, I'm gonna feel like it's in toward my hip a little bit when I'm doing that. Now you can also see from this position, if I'm looking from down the line, how that's a little bit under my right forearm. So I'm exaggerating here so you can see that on camera, but this is under or lower. This would be over top. I don't want this or I'm gonna really chop down into it. So set up, get your tilt, add your right hand, palm up, and then feel like that elbow is kind of towards your hip there. Now I'm in a powerful position where I can really get it inside from the slot and get that great, really athletic setup. Now the third piece of this really athletic, powerful setup is gonna be my stance. And I see players all the time go wrong with this and it's actually become some pretty common instruction uh, the last few years is we want our stance fairly narrow or just shoulder width apart. Now, we could argue that, but there's a great test for this. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and set up to the golf ball and I want you to start with your stance really, really narrow. Just have your feet almost together, touching. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a swing now and I'm gonna try to kill this golf ball. I'm gonna try to hit it absolutely as hard as I can and see how far I can hit my driver. I'm even gonna get my tilts and everything like I was trying to do with my shoulders and my arm and let's see what happens. I smoked that one. That's about as good as I can hit one swinging from that way. Down the right center of the fairway, according to my flight scope, I swung 107 miles an hour and about as daggone good as I could hit one. I hit one 280, so not too bad. If everything else in your body is working well, if your hands, arms, shoulders, all that is delivering the club properly, you can do a lot of things with the lower body wrong and still get some good distance like I was talking about there where I showed there. Now what I want you to do is gradually widen that stance up. Let me grab a couple golf balls here. And I'm gradually gonna go wider and wider until I found my, find my most athletic stance width. So you don't have to listen to me. I don't have to, I'm not the, in charge of exactly what you have to do. Find out for yourself. Start very narrow and then go wider and wider in your stance until you feel like you're the most athletic. For you, let's say you have this really wide, powerful stance like this, that's okay. As long as you move your feet a little bit, that's gonna be completely fine. You can set up that way and still be really good. What I've found for most players is they like to set up, and I've tested this with quite a few players, a little wider than shoulder width apart. So if I stand straight up and down, you can see about how wide my feet are here. If I drew a line vertically from the ankle, it would be outside my shoulders, both my right foot and my left foot. This is about the most athletic I can get from my own personal stance. This is about the width that I see for most players. So a couple inches wider than your shoulders is perfect. Look at Rory McIlroy, the longest pound for pound hitter on the PGA Tour. You're gonna see a nice wide stance like this. This is athletic. My legs are bent. I feel like I could really drive off the ground when I'm doing this. Now, the one thing you don't wanna do from here is I don't wanna keep my feet still. I don't wanna keep my feet kind of suctioned to the ground there and be swinging all arms. I have to go ahead and let my feet move. On the back swing, my left heel is gonna come up slightly. On my follow through, I'm really gonna let that right foot rotate all the way around. That's a very, very good key. But as long as I'm doing that, I can go as wide as I want and still have the movement and the, the freedom in my golf swing. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up what I feel like is my most, most powerful stance and let's tie all three things that I talked about together. Number one, I have a little bit of a shoulder tilt. Number two, my right hand is coming into the club a little bit more from the bottom with my right elbow pit up. Number three, I have that nice athletic wide stance, a little bit of knee bend. I feel like I'm playing shortstop here. And now I'm in a position where I can really hit this golf ball pretty daggone hard. Let's give it a whirl. All right, hit that one nicely right down the center. What if you had a surefire way to get your body moving correctly? And one of the things that I found is if we can get the body to move correctly, the hands, the arms, the club will follow right along. If I try to get the ball to go where I want it to go, if I try to get my hands and arms and club to move the way I want those to move, 
but my body's not moving correctly. Maybe I'm swaying to the right and swaying to the left. Maybe I'm losing my posture. One of several things that could happen if we're not moving our body correctly, it's gonna be almost impossible to get the ball to go the direction we want it to go day in and day out. Well, I have a surefire way, a step-by-step -step system that I'm gonna lead you through in this video. It's gonna make your body move perfectly. And then we can just add the arms and club like we're gonna to get to later in this video. And man, you're gonna hit a lot of great shots. One thing to keep in mind, this is absolutely not a beginner video. This is the same thing that I would do if I'm practicing myself. Now this is broke down in a way where if you've never even swung a golf club in your life, you could follow right along with this and get a ton out of it. But don't mistake this for being too easy or too simple. The best golfers in the world, scratch golfers, anybody that's playing some great golf is gonna get a lot of benefit out of this. So let's grab a club, stand up in your living room right now, and let's go ahead, follow along with me. We're gonna get a lot of great work done. All right, so let's jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna do, as I mentioned, is I wanna build my body working in the correct way. And that all starts with golf is a rotational sport. So go ahead and grab a club right from your living room, put it across your shoulders. I wanna put it up here on the top of my shoulders and have my fingertips kinda of touching the edge of my shoulders here. And what I wanna focus on is standing straight up and down and getting used to the rotational piece of this. Now all these drills we're gonna go through today, I want you to get in five reps of this. You're gonna work right along with me. I'm gonna give you some key checkpoints to hit. And if you follow these, you're gonna be well on your way to making some great golf swings building that muscle memory, building your body working in the correct way. So let's go ahead and grab a club, put it across our shoulders. As I stand straight up and down, the first thing I wanna do is get that club pointing at least 90 degrees or 90 degrees of rotation coming in the back swing and then the forward swing. Now here, I'm letting this club go ahead and rotate level with the ground. So again, we're gonna get in four or five reps here. You'll notice my left foot starts to lift up a little bit in the back swing. My right foot lifts up a little bit in the forward swing. As I come on through, I'm gonna get a little bit more than 90 degrees, and I'm gonna get this right side of my shoulder, this right shoulder pointing as far down the fairway as I can. Now that can only happen if I let my hips swivel. That can only happen if I let my feet move a little bit on the ground. So many times I see players get locked in, they don't wanna move their feet at all, and now I get really bound up. I gotta go ahead and let my feet move and let my shoulders, my hips rotate back and through. That's really the basis of the golf swing. If I can get that rotation, everything else is built on top of that. Now from here, we're simply gonna take that same rotation and we're just gonna hinge forward. So if I'm coming level with the ground, imagine this being a plane of glass as I'm rotating back and through. In the golf swing, all we're doing is we're hinging forward. So now that plane of glass is tilted down toward the ground. Imagine a window here, anywhere between from where I would be hitting the golf ball to say two or three feet outside of that. And I want to imagine this club or this plane of glass being tilted down toward that. And now as I rotate back and through, I want my club to be pointing in that zone. So again here, letting my foot lift up. As I come back, I'm getting at least 90 degrees of shoulder turn. As I come on through, I'm getting past 90 degrees, letting my right foot come on up. I'm staying in my posture here. I don't want to come all the way to my complete finish. I'm just going to stay in my posture where that club is rotating on that same plane of glass back and through. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and get four or five reps as I'm doing this, rotating back and through, making sure that my club is pointing on the ground, almost imagining a line going back and through toward my target, and my club is just gonna trace that line as I come back and through. That's getting my body to stay in its posture, that's getting me to rotate, that's really building the foundation of what is a golf swing. So as I really ingrain this, that's gonna make golf a lot simpler, it's gonna make me more consistent, and because I got good rotation, it's also gonna give me a lot of power. Now the next piece of this, I need to add a little bit of weight shift. In the golf swing, there's a weight shift to the right and there's a weight shift to the left in the downswing. I can do the same thing as I'm rotating with this club on my shoulders. Again, hinge forward, get that club pointing somewhere slightly outside of what would be the golf ball. And as I come to my backswing, I wanna pause as I'm at the top of my backswing. And if I had this club drop straight down, it would kinda hit on the inside of my left leg. So imagine if I was just to drop this straight down, it kind of hit on the inside of my left foot here. If my leg wasn't in the way, that club would drop down and hit the ground about right there. What I don't want to do is I don't want to sway to the right and go way over here. That club would drop down way outside my foot. That would be too much movement laterally. I'd get inconsistent because my eyes are moving too far to the right and I'd have to move them back to the left on the downswing. I don't also want to have a reverse pivot, which would be something more like this, Whereas if I drop that club, 
it would be hitting more over toward my left foot. Again, that's gonna create inconsistency because now I'm coming back to the left of my backswing. I'm gonna have to fall to the right of my downswing. Plus I'm gonna lose a lot of power as I'm doing that. So that's the next piece. Let's go ahead and grab that club again. Do another four or five reps right along with me. Good rotation, club over the right instep of my right foot. As I come through now, the club is gonna be on the instep of my left foot. So I've let my weight shift to the left. My right toe has swiveled off the ground. And now I'm getting at least that 90 degrees of turn as I'm staying in my posture. Again, let's go ahead and rotate back. Let your left foot lift a little bit. Rotate through, let your right foot pivot or rotate on around. Make sure you get that good turn. If you wanna go a little extra, maybe you're a little bit more flexible, go to the, whatever the range of flexibility you have is completely fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go a little past that if I can. As I come through, I'm gonna go a little past that. As long as I keep my club pointing to the ground, then I'm completely fine. I can go as far as my range of motion will let me. So if you're a little bit tighter, you may not go as far, but go as far as you can. So until now, what we've done is we've rotated these hips, we've let our legs move properly, and we let our shoulders go. Let's really open up our chest and the, and the last piece of our shoulders, which would be protraction and retraction of our shoulders. So protraction means that my shoulders are coming forward. Retraction means my shoulders are coming back. We really wanna maximize this in the golf swing to get every ounce of club head speed we can get, making golf as easy as we can. So what I want you to do here is let's set up and do what I call the lawnmower drill. Let's get our hands in front. And what I wanna imagine again is, here my hands are level, I'd be rotating level with the ground. Let's go ahead and hit, tilt forward until I'd be rotating kinda of on that plane again, just like we did with the club. And I wanna go ahead and grab here, imagine I'm grabbing a lawnmower, kind of a, a cord that I would start a lawnmower with. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this lawnmower back and I'm gonna pull it all the way back up to my chest. I'm gonna go as far back as I can with my elbow going up. So what this has done is that's really opened up my right shoulder. I've retracted my right shoulder to really help me load up in the backswing. So I'm going as far as I can and then I'm gonna go ahead and let my arm come all the way back. As I come down, I'll let my arm swing down. And then from there, as I get to impact or what would be impact, I'm going to let my hips open up and then I'm taking the, the left hand, just like a lawn mower, and I'm gonna pull it coming all the way on through. So again, we're getting four or five reps in with this. Really let that come back as far as you can. Open up the chest, let the right side of the chest retract, and then extend your arm as far as you can. Maybe you can only go to here. Maybe you're not gonna get as far. Maybe if you're a little more flexible, you can open up your chest even a little bit more and get it facing the sky. I'm not that flexible, but some of you may be. Let that open up. And then as I come down, let my arms come together, that would be impact, and then open up the left side of it. Again, I'm staying in my posture as I'm doing this, really letting my shoulders open up, impact, and then I'm coming through and opening up. Now let's make this a little bit more like a golf swing instead of the lawnmower action. The lawnmower really opened us up. Let's make this a little bit more accurate now. So we talked about how, you know, I could put my arms out and rotate this way, and I'm just gonna hinge forward. Let's do the same thing here now. So as I come to the top of the back swing, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate all around. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my arms to stay 90 degrees with my shoulders. So as my shoulders rotate, my arms rotate. And from there, I'm gonna to try to get my left arm pointing as far behind the golf ball as I can, or the imaginary golf ball there. My right arm's gonna go as far behind me as I can. Now from there, as I start my downswing, I wanna go ahead and turn that hand down. This will be what we call covering the golf ball, getting some forward shuffling, getting some lag. This is really important to square the face up earlier. I'll get to that later in this video, but I wanna go ahead and go to the top and then square up my hands. So my left hand, my logo of my glove, points down to the ground. If this was what's called flexion, meaning that I'm taking the palm of my hand, putting it back toward my body, that's what I would feel there. So that's flexion. As I turn that hand down, the palm of my hand is facing toward my chest. If I'm doing my right hand, instead of having it open here, I'm gonna have the palm bent back and facing away from me. So again, it's that what would be extension of the right hand or the knuckles of my right hand facing back toward me. So I go to the top of the swing, I do my, my squaring of the club face, palm of my left hand toward my chest, knuckles of my right hand going back. I'm coming down to impact. So if I meet those two hands up here, that would be what would be forward shaft lean in the golf swing. And the driver, we're behind that driver, it actually still has a little bit of forward shaft lean, 
because we're behind it, we're releasing in front. That's gonna make it pretty much straight up and down. We'll, we'll get to that here in a second when we add the club. But I'm coming down to impact, and then from there, I'm rotating all the way around. Again, my hand is facing my chest. My knuckles of my, my right hand are kind of facing back at me, and I'm rotating all the way on through. So again, I'm starting out with my hands kind of 90 degrees, full backswing. As I start, before I start my downswing, I'm gonna get my hands in a position where it's early squaring of the club face. That's what we call the move in the top speed golf system. I'm coming down to impact, and then I'm letting that extend on through. Arms out, square the face, come down to impact, come all the way on through. So again, my hands are doing this motion as I'm squaring that face. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna do this motion, which would be the opposite direction. That would be the flip or the cast that's early from the top. I wanna have my hands back. So rotate to the top, hands back, come to impact, hands all the way on through. Do a good five to 10 reps of those, get comfortable with that, then let's add the club. Now I've built how my body wants to move. I've built how my arms and hands wanna move. Let's just add the club and this gets very simple now. So as I add this golf club, let's go ahead and put a tee in the ground here. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna let those hands and arms rotate, my chest rotate, and I'm gonna pull that club to the top of the swing. As I start down, I'm gonna square that club face up. That would be the, the, the bowing of the left wrist, the palm coming back toward my chest. My right hand kind of extending where the knuckles are back, and that's gonna square the club face up early. So let me show you what this looks like. I go to the top, I square that club face early, and you'll see how my club head starts to turn down where it's facing the golf ball. That's what the pros are doing to square that face up, hit that nice draw, and really compress the golf ball. The opposite of that would be, instead of squaring this face up here, I have my wrist the other way, and now my face is wide open. That's gonna be that over the top slice. From there, I'd wanna come this way, my face is open, the ball's gonna go up in the air, it's gonna slice over into the woods on the right side of the fairway. So I wanna make sure, make that big turn, square the face, come down to contact, and then all the way on through, this is the first time you're gonna to come to your finish. So as we do this again, good full turn going back, square the face, come all the way on through to the good full finish. Now my right shoulder is coming around to the, the fairway as far as I can get it to go. I'm balanced over my left foot. So if you'll see here, I could pick up my right foot and I'd still be facing the fairway. My belt buckle is facing the fairway. My chest, as I do this, is nice and high. So good turn back, square the face, come all the way on through, and now my chest is facing up toward the sky. I can really rotate on around. My chin is nice and high, and that ensures that I'm completing my swing. What I don't wanna do is square the face, come down, and then stay down here. I've stopped my swing. I'm just all hands and arms coming on through. I wanna get my body rotating all the way on around, completing that good full finish. That can only happen if my right foot comes completely off the ground. I have to be all the way up on the toe to get that to rotate all the way around there. I really wanna feel like I'm balanced on my left foot. So as you do this, feel like you hold that finish for a good three seconds. So I'm all the way rotated around. Again, balance on my left leg. You'll notice how here, if I was to go ahead and stay on this left foot, I could stay here all day. It's almost like I'm facing the target. The only difference is my feet are pointing in a different direction. So do a few more reps of that, full turn back. Square the face, full finish. Hold your finish for a good three seconds. And when I say hold your finish, it doesn't mean you have to hold the club in your finish. You can let the club relax. It's I'm holding my feet, my hips, my chest, my body, watching that, fair, that ball go down the middle of the fairway. Now let's make this a little bit more fluid. Same key checkpoints. Hinging forward, I'm gonna rotate back and through. This time I'm not gonna pause. I'm not going to the top and pausing. I'm not squaring up the face and pausing and then I'm not coming all the way on through and pausing. Well, actually, at the finish, I am pausing. But as I come on back, I'm just gonna make this all one fluid motion. So let's see what that looks like. Again, good full shoulder turn. As I come on through, I'm gonna hold that finish for three seconds. I wanna put a T in the ground, and I'm actually gonna clip that T. If you're in your living room, that's completely fine. Just imagine there's a T in the way. You don't have to actually hit the T out of the ground. If I'm out on the driving range, don't add a ball yet. Get used to making this swing without hitting a golf ball. Just feel like you clipped the tee out of the ground. Turn back. 
turn through, hold my finish. I don't want to lose my finish for at least three seconds. And I'm going to repeat this a good four or five times. Again, I'll go without the T. Again, making a big full turn, squaring the hands, and then coming on through. So I put that all together. Nice swing, hold the finish for three seconds. Let my feet rotate, both on the back swing. So as my left heel may lift a little bit, my hips are rotating, my shoulders are rotating. As I come on through, this is a big key, let that right foot come all the way on around. So again, without any pauses, hold that finish for three seconds, and you're well on your way to building that muscle memory. Now let's go ahead and add the golf ball. All right, so now we're gonna hit a golf ball with this. I'm gonna hit a few on my flight scope, and I'm just gonna talk about the same key checkpoints. So again, as I'm hitting a golf ball now, I'm just running through exactly what we've done. I'm hinging forward. I'm making sure I've got a good turn going back and through, and really finishing my swing hold for three seconds. All right, so that was a nice shot. Where you see that I held my fall through. On this one, instead of focusing on the turn back and through, now I'm gonna focus on squaring up that club face. So again, I go to the top, I square the face, and then I rotate on through. If I square that face early, it's gonna help me to compress the golf ball, hit a bit of a better draw on this one, and really get some compression on this golf ball. Again, hold your finish. One, two, three seconds. And then finally, I'm gonna focus on my follow through. So for here, I'm really gonna work on holding that finish with my chest nice and high, completing my swing, staying completely in balance for that three seconds. So when I finish my swing here, I wanna be able to pick up my left foot, stay completely in balance until that ball lands. That's gonna help me to stay really centered in my body, be much more consistent when I'm doing this, but still get a lot of power because I'm finishing my backswing and I'm finishing my follow through. Hey guys, welcome to beautiful Heathrow Country Club in Lake Mary, Florida, my home course. And we're gonna talk about three tips that are really gonna help you to hit your driver much better. Now, when you get up to those holes, they got a little bit of water on them. Maybe you get to those par fives like this. It's just so much more enjoyable to smoke a driver right down the middle of the fairway and not even have to worry about being in the rough or out of bounds or that kind of thing. So we're gonna do three things that you absolutely must do to hit your best drives. Let's go and get started. All right, so the first piece I wanna talk about is what I call snap, don't slap. So nobody wants to slap at the ball. We don't wanna lose that club head speed. And when we slap at the ball, basically what that means is I'm using my hands kind of back and forth this way. Oftentimes I'll cast a little bit and then the club head outraces my hands and I end up kind of slapping at the ball. The disadvantage of that is now my club face is very inconsistent. One time it's closed, one time it's open, and I'm also gonna have a tough time getting speed from this. So let me go ahead and hit one. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this slow motion video that's gonna come up here in a second. So I'm gonna try to slap at this ball, really cast it from the top. Yeah, and I hit that, I hooked that ball 40 yards to the left, almost onto the road. Hopefully I didn't hit a car over there, but it's very difficult to be consistent when I'm doing that. There's no way I can hit a fairway when I'm swinging this way. What's happening is, if we look at our wrist and we kind of put them in front of us, if I bend my wrist to the right this way, this would be flexion with my left wrist, it's called extension with the right wrist, we don't need to know those terms. That would be to the right and then back to the left. A lot of times people think we need to get speed by doing this and by kind of pushing the club through to help to accelerate it. When I do that, that starts to flip the club, to slap the club, and it's gonna outrace my hands. Anytime the club head gets in front of your hands before contact, you are dead in the water. It is gonna be almost impossible to have control of that club face. When it outraces them, it becomes very, very unstable. That's a slap motion, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. Now, a snap motion is very diff different. I still want that club to release, so I wanna have some lag. I wanna get that club to whip on through. It's snapping, I'm getting that speed at the bottom, but it's when I'm doing that and how I'm doing that that's gonna make a world of difference. So as I'm about halfway in my downswing, you'll notice that's my, what we call our maximum lag position. So in that max lag, now I've created this big angle with my hands and my arms. My body's going ahead and opening up, and as I continue down, now my club still has a pretty good size angle in it. If you look at the butt end of this club, if you imagine a laser beam kind of shooting out of there, it's not turned back up yet. My club isn't pointing back up toward my body. It's pointing out kind of down the fairway. 
Now from here, to get that club to really release, I want to snap the club head. That's when I'm going to start turning this club head back up, or this grip back up, to release the club head and to get a lot of speed from the club head there. So that's what we call the snap action. You can call it the release. You can call it whatever you want to. And the big key to really put this together that we talk about in the Top Speed Golf system is I want this to release about 45 degrees in front of me. So if I imagine a line going from my chest 45 degrees out in front, whenever that club gets fully released, now it's going to be pointing in that direction. So I'm still letting that club whip on through or snap through, but it's not a slap. I'm letting that happen in front of the golf ball, and now my club is just kind of trailing along behind. The golf ball is just getting in the way. I'm releasing out in front, and that impact is just happening. So let me go ahead and hit one here the correct way. We'll show you some in slow motion. I'll give you a couple tips on how to do this exactly. There we go, hit that one great, right down the middle of the fairway. I got that lag, and then I got that to release out in front. Now in the first one, we talked about how we didn't want to push with the, the hands or wrist, because now my club head outraces my hands and it gets really unstable. In this one, now I'm, I'm taking my hands here down at the ball. You'll notice my right wrist is angled back in what we call wrist extension, or my knuckles back to my elbow. I'm gonna feel like my palm of my hand is still facing down to the ground. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like I do this motion. So if I'm casting a, a fishing pole, my thumb goes from up to really going down this way. That's what's called ulnar deviation or just a casting or a flip type motion. I'm doing that way down here at the ball in that type of a direction. So my hand isn't going this way and cupping, it's going down, just like I'm doing this with a fishing pole. And now as I do that in front of the golf ball, that's gonna release that club. Notice how here, both my wrists are nice and straight. There's no bend in those at all. If I was flipping, that would look like this as I'm coming through impact. And my wrist would be cupped here and it would be bent back, bent forward like that with this other hand. That's gonna to lead to a lot of inconsistency if you're doing that. So let's pause just before impact. We've got a nice angle, this wrist is flat. At this point, my thumb is pulled back toward my body. I've got all this lag. And then we're gonna pause in the straight line release in the top speed golf system. And we're gonna work on this thumb being down. So I went from the up to down. That's that whip action that's happening through there. That's that snap. And when I do this correctly, I feel like I'm just going to take the bottom two inches of this grip with my bottom two fingers. That's where I'm going to feel the pressure there. And I'm just going to snap the shaft, snap that grip right off the club. That's going to help with a ton of speed. So let's go ahead and pause and do that about 15, 20 times. Pausing here and then boom, releasing that. Pausing here, wrist nice and flat, wrist turned down. After we've done that about 20 times, let's get that same feeling and more of a full swing, just a practice swing there. So we're not gonna hit any balls yet, we're just gonna get used to that feeling, and then we can go ahead and take it on out to the driving range and start hitting some shots and then out onto the course. All right, so that's piece number one, snap, don't slap. Piece number two, where it's the same old saying we've heard for a long time, but with the new twist, we're gonna tee it high and let it fly. Now the reason you wanna tee this ball high is a couple of things. So first off, if I have a great drive, what's happening are two things. Number one, I'm gonna hit this ball a little bit higher on the club face. Now, as I start to hit it a little higher on the club face, there's actually more loft on the top of your driver. Your driver isn't flat like a, like a sheet of metal. It's actually rounded. If, you're, if you were to take this and bring this out into a full circle, it actually makes about a three foot circle is how the, the face is curved. So it has a slight curve to it, meaning at the bottom of the driver, you're gonna have a lot less loft. This is an eight and a half degree driver. At the bottom, there's probably five or six degrees, four degrees, something like that. At the top, there's probably 12 or 13 degrees. So if I hit it at the top of the face, it's gonna launch higher. That's great for distance. That's what we really want. The second piece is, as I make contact higher, it actually has a gear effect and the ball is stuck to the face and actually puts a little top spin, not really top spin, just less back spin, and it gets the ball to knuckle through the air. That's a real key for high, long drives. The higher I can hit it, hitting it on the top of the face, and the less spin I can have, also hitting on the top of the face, means the longer drives that I'm gonna have. That's the first piece. The second piece to this is I actually wanna be swinging up on the ball. Again, if I'm coming down on it, I'm kinda of swiping across the ball, and now I'm getting all this backspin. The ball wants to shoot up, kinda of float in the air, and then fall out of the sky. You don't get any kind of good distance. But if I can set this ball up where I'm actually swinging up on it, 
Now, again, it's going to promote that higher launch and it's going to promote that lower spin. So the more I can hit up on this golf ball, the better I'm going to be for creating as much distance as I can. Well, if I have the ball low on the ground, let's imagine this ball is barely teed up on the ground, just like this, it's teed up on the turf. If I swing up, if I try to hit up on this, now I'm gonna miss over top of the ball. No way to make it happen. Plus, there's no way to hit it anywhere but the bottom of the face. So I want this ball teed up nice and high so that I can hit it on an ascending angle, on an upward angle, and still make contact with the top of the face. Now, with your iron shots, it's gonna be on the ground. We're gonna to have to hit down on it. If we had the luxury of teeing up iron shots, we'd do the same thing, but we don't. We have to hit it off the ground. That's why you hit down and take a divot with your irons. That's the easiest way to hit it off the ground, and that's why this is different with the driver. So a couple things that we want to note here, and I'll show you some slow motion video with this also. I'm going to play this up in my stance slightly. I got the ball teed up. For me, I like to have it at least a half a ball above the club or a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and tee this on about three quarters of the golf ball sticking up above the crown. I'm going to have that a little bit up in my stance. If I really want to get one, get a hold of one, get some extra different distance, I'm going to play it up here toward my front foot. Again, that's going to help promote me hitting it on the upswing. And then number three, I'm going to visualize in my mind that I'm going to go ahead and knock it off the top of the face. I don't want to get anywhere near the bottom of the face or it's going to kill my distance. So I put the ball up in my stance. I've got it teed up nice and high. And now I'm going to feel like I'm swinging up on the ball and de-lofting the face so that I still get that high knuckler, almost a little bit of top spin on the ball is the way that you want to think about this. So if I do those things, man, that's really going to help me to increase my distance. That one felt great. Big high ball, knuckled through the wind, really nice shot. Now I saved the best for last. I know a lot of you guys out there are having those balls that slice. If you get into any kind of wind or you struggle at all with distance, that slice is actually just going to eat up your distance really, really badly. So if I want to hit it farther, I've got to hit a little bit of a draw or at least dead straight shot if I want to get the maximum distance on there. That's going to get the least amount of spin. That's going to help the ball to really launch pretty fast. So when I'm setting up to this golf ball, a lot of times what I have people visualize is that they're coming through and the face is really square. And they imagine they're just going to kind of pull this club through square and the ball is going to go right down the middle of the fairway. And when they have that visualization in their mind, because they struggle a little bit with a slice, the ball just tails off to the right and tends to slice. If you feel like you're going to hit it square and 90% of the time it's either fading or slicing, this is really going to help you. So I want to imagine the club face, imagine that that piece of metal is going to wrap around the outside of the ball. So if I'm looking at this golf ball from my perspective and I kind of put a line through the middle of the ball, that would be dead square. If I hit right on that line, that would be a square shot. Now when we do that, like we just talked about, we tend to slice. That means my club was actually a little bit on the inside of that line. What I want you to feel like you're doing is to get that club to wrap around to the outside of the golf ball and hit on the outside of that line. Now what that's doing is that's closing the face a little bit more. And when you first do this, you're going to start to hit some shots to the left. That's okay. That just means you're doing a little bit too much, but that ball is going to start left and it's going to hook even a little bit more to the left, especially for you guys that are coming over the top. Now I'm getting to the outside of that ball and it's starting left going even farther left. That's all right. Let's start out on the range doing this. And I want you to hit those shots that do go to the left. And then gradually we're going to start to come a little bit more from the inside. I'm going to feel like if I'm at home plate and the second base and the baseball field is directly in front of me, I'm swinging more out toward first base or the, the visitor's dugout. And now I'm going to be releasing that club, getting it to outside the ball. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to start a little bit straighter and then it's going to draw. After you've gotten a few of these in where that ball actually starts to turn on over a decent amount, let's just tone that down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit one and really exaggerate though. I'm coming inside and out and I'm letting that face turn over. Now, as I'm doing this, the feeling that I'm getting in my hands, if you go ahead and set this club up here, is that I'm taking this club and I'm twisting it just like I'm turning a clock. Like if you can imagine the butt end of the club is a clock face and I'm going to turn that, that's rolling the club. You'll notice when I do that, my left wrist bows. That's what everybody wants at impact. That really helps us what the pros are doing. And my right wrist kind of turns knuckles back this way. That's what's going to release that face as I'm doing that. So we can see that would really get that face to turn on over. I'm going to exaggerate here. Hopefully we can see this on camera, but I'm really going to get this one to swing from right to left. There we go. So we saw that one started down the middle of the fairway, hooked over to the left, almost by the trees. I'm right on track. That's what I want to have happen at first if I'm struggling with that slice. 
Now the second piece to this, after you've hit about 15 or 20 balls doing that, and you've got the feel for that, I'm just going to tone down a little bit. Don't let that club release quite as much to the outside of the ball, and don't swing quite as far to the right, and now you're going to have that little baby draw that everybody wants to have to get the maximum distance. All right, guys. So take those three tips. Number one, snap, don't slap. Number two, tee it high. Get that ball to launch high with low spin. And number three, get that club head to the outside of the ball to get that nice draw. All right, guys, in this video, I'll give you some awesome tips to help your drive. And one of the things we mentioned is a straight line release. And I think this is one of the most important things you can do for your golf game to let that ball get in the way and to swing through the ball instead of hitting or slapping at the ball. I want to play a preview of my straight line release video, one of the best ones that I have. All you're going to want to do is click the card that pops up on your screen or down below in the description. Click the link there. It's going to take you to where you can get instant access to that full video, get the straight line release in your game, and get a whole lot more consistent. Let's go and get started. A common misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're going to fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms. So that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's going to create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance. Our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.